Okay, this is part two of the video on how to create the scrolling city uh, landscape thing that you guys did in Illustrator. So this is all of your art put in here. And um, we in part one, we did the Illustrator where we set up the file and copied them all in layers. And in this video, I will show you how to take it to the next level where you can colorize the scene and animate it and put it in layers and everything. All right, so let's get busy and I'll show you what to do next. All right, so open up your Illustrator file and throw away that sample layer. We're not gonna need that. So what we're gonna do next is go to each layer and go to collect a new layer. So do that and then rename the layers after you do that. So now we're gonna go to the front buildings, collect a new layer. And what this is gonna do is it's going to help us so that we can save this as a Photoshop file. And when we open it up, it won't have like a million layers. It's just gonna have these layers right here that we're saving. If we were to export it as a Photoshop file without doing this, your file would be huge because it would be a Photoshop file with all those layers. And this is a really you know, long file. You don't, um, so do that to all the layers and rename them. And then you are ready to go to file, save as, just save your file as an Illustrator file. I have a backup and then go to file, export, export as, and choose format Photoshop PSD. Make sure it's RGB and leave the resolution at 72 and make your settings like this. Put, um, make sure you check maximum editability and make it look just like that. And just say okay to that. And then you're gonna uh, open that up in Photoshop. So file open. All right, so once you open this up in Photoshop, the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is merge all these groups. So click on the group and go to Merge Group or press Control E. And then that will flatten those two folders into just one flattened fold or one layer for each thing. So go ahead and do that to each layer, or each one of those top groups, click on it and press Control E. All right, now you can see we have everything on a separate layer. I'm turning all of them on and off just to check everything out. And now I'm gonna duplicate the back buildings layer and then do transform and flip it vertical. Cause what I wanna do is kind of make it look like a reflection in the water. So I have a copy of it and I have it flipped vertical. I did control T and then edit transform flip. Vertical, now I'm lowering the opacity so I can see through the buildings a little bit. So it looks like it's on the water. And then I'm using Control T and holding the Shift key and pulling that up so that the reflection isn't that long. So it kind of shortens it up. Now I'm gonna take the eraser with a soft brush and just kind of erase the very ends of those buildings just so that it fades into the water and doesn't have like a hard line. You don't really have to do this step, but I think it looks good. All right, now I'm gonna click on both of those, the buildings, and then again, merge layers, control E. Also, I want the sky things and the back buildings to be on the same layer. So I'm gonna do control E to those two things. I don't think they need to be separate. All right, I wanna do another uh, water reflection. So I'm gonna go on my layer that has water things and I'm gonna do the Control J to duplicate it. Then I'm gonna do the Control T, transform, flip vertical, just like I did on those back buildings. And I'm gonna drag that copy so that it's um, underneath the original copy. This one's gonna take a little more editing since things are in a different place. So I'm gonna lower the opacity on that and I'm gonna hide the other layers so I can see what I'm doing. So you can see that the reflection for the first island is in a good spot 
but the whale is not. So I'm going to get the lasso tool and click on that, and then the move tool, and then pull that reflection up so it's just underneath him. And then I'm going to do the same thing to that island that is farther away. You can see that it's too far from the island, so I'm going to lasso it and then get move tool and slide that up under the island. And let me move my layers palette out of the way here. And that one looks fine, so that one's good to go. All right, so you can see I lowered the opacity a little bit on that layer. I also want to merge them, so shift click and press control E again. All right, now I'm going to get the eraser tool and erase some of those reflections a little bit because they're a little bit too strong. So make sure you get a soft brush and just erase the very edges of it so that you can only see the reflection close to the object and then it kind of fades away. And like I said, this isn't necessary. You don't have to do this on yours, but I think it's a nice touch. All right, let me turn all my layers on. Now I'm going to get the crop tool, and I am going to pull this image area out twice as big as it already is. It doesn't have to be a specific length, but pretty much double that area. And then press Enter once you get it to be that big. All right, what I'm going to do next is extend these layers out so that they're even longer. So I made a copy, Control J, and then I'm going to drag it. Actually, for the background, I don't need to do that. Let me go to the front buildings. Those definitely need to be doubled. So click on that, do Control J, so you have two copies of it. Then do Control T and pull out another copy and just slide it to the right. And then you can press enter and then shift click both of those and press control E and now they're on the same layer. Let's do the same thing to the signs copy. Do control J, control T, slide out another copy of it, press enter, then click both of those and do control E to merge them together. All right, so we want the signs layer and the front buildings layer to be doubled so that they're twice as long as the other layers. All right, what we're going to do next is, let me go ahead and delete that extra background layer. We didn't need that one. We'll just merge them together. Okay, so we have our signs, we have our front buildings, checking all the layers. All right, everything looks good. We are ready to start a new file. So go File, New, choose Film and Video, and choose the 1080p. And this is where we're going to make our animation. Do Control H to get rid of those guides because they're kind of annoying. What you're going to do next is copy each layer into this new document. So do Control A to select all, Control C, and then Control V to paste it. And rename all your layers again. So I'm going to name this background. You can get rid of that white background that it came with. And I'm going to use Control T and hold the Shift key and just make this a little taller because there was a little bit of a white line there. All right, now I'm going to go on the back buildings layer and copy that and paste it in. Then do Control T and just line it up um, so it touches the left side of the screen. You can nudge it with the arrow keys and press Enter. Now I'm going to go and name this my back buildings. So basically what we're doing is just recreating that layered file, but in the new document, which is the size of a video, the 1080p. So just keep copying and pasting your layers. These are my water things. You can move them anywhere you want. Try to position them similar to what you had in your Illustrator file. I'm checking to see. I need to move that to the right a little bit. All right, now we're going to go to the front buildings, and we still have Control A, everything selected, Control C to copy. Now Control T to move your buildings down at the bottom. So line it up at the bottom left and name this front buildings. And then our final layer we need to copy is the signs. 
paste that in, name it signs, and then do control T and just move it down at the bottom. You don't need to move that all the way to the left, kind of move it to the right a little bit, depending on how you had it set up in your Illustrator file. All right, so now we have all these layers in the 1080p, and we need to see about changing the color. This part is definitely up to you how you do it. Okay, I'm clicking on an adjustment layer, and then I chose gradient, and I'm just going to choose one of these gradients and experiment. So if I click on that, it can open up this window and change the colors. I have no idea what I want. I'm just playing around with it. This is definitely an experimental part of this video. You don't have to do the same things as me. I am just trying stuff out. So I'm changing the colors that were in that gradient. And I'll leave it on that and say OK. The cool thing about these, it's adjustment layer. It's non-destructive. So I can experiment and turn it on and off. Nothing is permanent. So I'm going to try the layer blending modes and see what kind of weird things happen. I think I'm going to try kind of like a pastel look on this, but you certainly don't have to copy what I do. You can change it to any color you want or not change it at all. It's up to you. I think I'm just going to leave it on lighten and kind of have this pastel look. Alright, you can close that when you're done. You can always go back and edit it too though. You can lower the opacity if you want. And also remember that this is a layer mask. So you can go on your layer mask, click on the right, you can get a black brush, and you can paint over it to kind of erase it so that it's not... Let me put my opacity up a little bit on my brush. You can kind of erase it with a layer mask so that it's not as so that that color filter that you added is only maybe on part of it, so that all the buildings kind of look like, I don't know, it kind of looks like South Beach, Miami with those pastel colors. So you can just experiment with that and turn it on and off. You can use hue and saturation instead if you want anything really. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave it on this for now. If I want to edit it again, I can click on that thing and it lets me change things again. So that's the cool thing about these uh, layer masks. You can you can change them. They're non-destructive so you can edit them even after you've already applied them. Alright, I think I will just go ahead and leave it like that for now. And now we need to open our timeline. So go to Window, Timeline, click Create Video Timeline. So now you can see we have a timeline. Let's move the Layers tab out of the way. And at the very bottom, see that slider? Go ahead and put it to the left so that your um, timeline bar is small because we're going to extend this way out. I would say make it about 40. So you're going to have to reduce it an awful lot to make it fit all the way to 40. So keep going all the way. Obviously, if you want your animation to go real slow, you would make this even longer. But for this purposes, we're just going to go ahead and make it 40, which the animation is going to be a little bit fast at that, but it's, it's okay. So then go ahead and drag all your bars so that all the layers last for until 40. That's how long the layers will stay on. All right, so now we have everything on 40. Let's open up layers again, and you need to convert these to smart objects. So click on the layer, go over there, and click create, Convert to Smart Object. You cannot animate unless you do this. I sometimes forget this, so this is a really important step. Click on each layer and convert to smart object. If you don't do that, it won't animate. I can leave the back layer and the gradient map on the top with not being smart objects because they're not going to move. They're going to stay still the whole time. All right, let's start off animating the front buildings first. So open that window, click on your uh, transform and get one of those little keyframe diamonds. Then go to the end of your timeline and go back to where those diamonds are and click on one again so you have two diamonds. And now do Control T 
and move your buildings layers all the way till it stops on the other side. All right, and let's test this out. So now you can see when it's at the beginning of the timeline, it is over there. And as you progress through the timeline, it ends up going all the way to the end. All right, that's going to look good. Let's go ahead and do this to the signs. Click on Transform. Remember to keep the playhead at the beginning. And then go to the end and click another diamond in there. And now we want the um, signs to go by faster than we want the buildings, okay? Because the top layer is going to move the fastest. So we're going to go ahead and just scoot that all the way off so it's already passed by the time the buildings go. Okay, something happened here. What did I do wrong? Let me go back to that keyframe diamond and do control T again. All right, I think it just did, I think I forgot to press enter. So move it all the way off your board and press enter. Now let's try this again. Okay, now it's working. So you press play and you see that the signs are moving a little bit faster than the buildings because we had them go farther off the page outside the window. All right, now let's go to water things and let's go to the beginning of the playhead, click the transform and get a keyframe diamond. And then let's move our slider, our scrub bar they call it. And this time let's don't do it all the way at the end. Let's do it a little bit sooner than the other stuff and put a keyframe diamond there and do control T and move those things just off the page and press enter. All right, the reason why we didn't go all the way to the end is because we want those island things to move slower. But actually, if you want it to move slower, it needs to go the other direction. So we need to have this actually outside of the timeline. So the, the bigger space between the keyframe diamonds, it means more time goes by. So that means slower. So I actually need this to go past our timeline so that they move slower. So I'm going to reduce this uh, window with that little triangle down there so I can see more. And I'm going to move it out even farther. And that should really slow down the island. And There we go. That's looking a lot better. Maybe just a little more. All right, now let's go to the back buildings. Put your scrub playhead at the beginning. Put a transform keyframe diamond. And this time we are going to do that again. Press another transform keyframe. And we are gonna move the buildings to the end of the page again. And press enter. Now this one, we want to go even slower. So it goes way, way out past everything because we want those to take a long time to go across. All right, so that's not too bad. This is gonna take some tweaking at first, like you won't know how to time things, but you'll just get used to it. You just make two keyframe diamonds and you just keep sliding them until they become the speed you want. All right, when you're done, make sure you save your file as a PSD. That's so that you can edit it. If you wanna change anything about your animation, you need to save a PSD. And when you're ready to save it as a movie, go to File, Export, Render Video. All right, you can pretty much leave it on the default settings. Pay attention to where it's saving it so you know how to find it and then press Render.